That can be said of Zelensky too. He cannot survive without foreign support and that support is dwindling courtesy Donald Trump. So will the Ukraine war end in 2025? It's been on for more than 1,000 days, as we've been telling you. The situation on the ground is volatile. Ukraine is hitting deep inside Russia. Moscow is striking back with new weapons. On Sunday night, Russia launched 78 drones into Ukraine. Kiev says it shot down 32 of them. But that's not their only challenge. Winter is coming, the third winter of this war. The front lines are likely to freeze for the next few months. But Russia doesn't want to let up. Putin has approved a new budget for 2025. He's allocated $126 billion for military spending. $126 billion, that's 32.5% of the total Russian budget. For perspective, NATO countries are expected to spend 2.5% of their budget on defense. Putin plans to spend 32.5%. In 2024, military spending made up for 28.3% for in Russia. So the message is clear. Putin is prepared to ramp up this war. What about the other side? Well, there's a contrast there. Ukraine seems to be signaling at a thaw. On Friday, the Ukrainian president gave an interview to a British media outlet. Zelensky was asked a simple question there. Would he accept NATO membership? but based on the current territory that Kiev holds. Listen to what he had to say. Fact. The fact is that it is a solution to stop the hot stage of the war because we can just give the NATO membership to the part of Ukraine that is under our control. Yes, it could be possible, but no one offered. But the invitation must be given to Ukraine within its internationally recognized border. You can't give invitation to just one part of a country. Now, since the war began, Russia has occupied nearly 20% of Ukrainian territory. So right now, Kiev controls only 80% of Ukraine. Is Zelensky willing to let go of that for NATO membership? Well, that's what he's saying. But of course, there's a caveat. He says he will accept on the condition that NATO membership is offered to the whole of Ukraine. Confusing, right? Zelensky will accept membership for 80% of the territory, but he wants it to be offered to all of Ukraine. Does that mean that Ukraine is waving the white flag? In as many words as he can, Zelensky has said it. He said this could help end, and I'm quoting him, the hot phase of the war. But there are many ifs here. First of all, NATO has not offered any membership to him. Not for 80%, not for 100%. So this is a hypothetical question. Nonetheless, this response signals intent. Our agenda also includes work on NATO. An invitation for Ukraine to join NATO is a necessary thing for our survival. We are working at all levels to strengthen the position of Ukraine and the entire Euro-Atlantic community. I am grateful to each and everyone who helps us. So what happens to the lost territory, the 20% that Russia has? Zelensky says he will renegotiate its return with Russia, but in a diplomatic way. Well, good luck to him. This is making headlines because this is the furthest that Ukraine has gone to suggest that it would cede territory. And it's a very long shot for three reasons. One, Zelensky's plan does not have many takers in Ukraine. 20% is a big chunk after all. Top army commanders say the soldiers will be enraged, as will the citizens of Ukraine. So Zelensky may not survive this politically. Reason number two, NATO has not offered them membership. They did not want Kiev for the last three years. They do not want them now. And reason number three, Russia won't agree. Ukraine wanting to join NATO was the trigger for this war. It's unlikely that Moscow will agree to it now. If anything, this will escalate the conflict, with NATO pitted directly against Russia. Having said all of this, Zelensky's statement shows that he's trying to pick the best of the bad options that he has. Donald Trump will take office in six weeks from now. He wants to end the war on day one. That would mean concessions, especially for Ukraine. It could lose its territory anyway. So Zelensky is just making a virtue of it and signaling at peace. And while the US support for Ukraine remains dicey, Europe is trying to step up. This morning, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz arrived in Kiev, his second visit in three years. It's a surprise trip, 
with two objectives. One, more aid for Ukraine. Scholz has pledged $680 million in military aid. And reason number two, pushing for NATO membership. Olaf Scholz will discuss it with Zelensky and then he will raise it at a meeting in Brussels later this week. My very clear message from Kiev to Putin, we're in this for the long haul and we will stand by Ukraine for as long as it takes. We have talked not only to the current American administration, with which we had a very good cooperation in this regard, but we've already talked to the Donald Trump too. I believe that we can set on developing joint policies. This is everyone's aspiration. It is possible to do so, and in itself logical. So where does that leave us? The Ukraine war has entered a complex and uncertain phase with signals of peace from Kiev, escalation from Moscow, and the global leadership in transition. 2025 could bring a turning point in this conflict. But will the war end? For now, that question remains open.